Oh. Oh. Oh, oh, oh no. Oh, hi there. This is Jim from Small Time Outlaws. And welcome to, what, the 11th video in this simple game tutorial series. Um, in this video, we are actually going to make another an added graphical enhancement to our game. And what we're going to do, as you can see, our score text here is pretty ugly, right? So we're actually going to create our own little bitmap font systems. So we can change up this to be something, you know, more customized, more pretty. So I guess I can stop playing this awesome, awesome game we've created and get started. So what we'll do is inside our falling monkey falling dot monkey module down at the bottom we'll create a couple more classes. The first class is going to be the bitmap care class and this is just going to store all the information for each character in our bitmap font and the other one is actually going to be the, the class for our bitmap font. So this is just going to be a container of bitmap cares. So starting in the bitmap care class we're going to create a field called image posts for image position and we're going to make a vec a, the integer variety of our vec2d and this is just going to be the position of this character on our our font image so if you haven't seen it already and you'll need the numbers.png file for this one this video by the way if you haven't already put everything in here and so I'll open this up so you can see and we're just going to do numbers for this uh, for this game but you know later on it's you know, it's really easy to add more characters if you wanted to add the rest of the alphabet here you could but for right now I just have each frame has a different number in it and so they have different positions and each of these I believe are 24 by 24 I think the frame size we'll find out so going back to here so it's gonna be the image the position the top and that's the top left corner of the character it's not the middle of the character so it's the top left corner and then the size field is another vectdi and that's the width and height of that particular character's uh, section on the font image and then additionally we're gonna have a padding vect2d and this is just if you want to offset that image by any amount when we go to draw the actual, you know, the actual text, that you can set this padding if any characters aren't quite where you want. If you want to like adjust where they are up and down or left and right, squeeze them in a little more, you can do that. And now we're just creating a method, our constructor. And what this constructor is going to do is take each value individually. So this is the X and Y position of the top left corner of the image or the character on the image and then the width and height of that image and then the padding in the X and Y directions and so now our image post is going to be signed I'll scroll down for you signed a new vec2di with the X and Y values the size is a new Whoops, I forgot to put new up here. New vec 2 di with the width and height. And the padding is a new vec 2 d with our X padding and our Y padding. And that's it for our bitmap characters. So now we go down into our bitmap font. And the first field is going to be the image for our font, so our font image that we load in. And the next one is going to be an array of these bitmap care objects for each character we want to draw. So what we'll do is say new, and this is going to be our character, we'll call it a character map. This is going to be the bitmap care array, and then we're going to make it a new bitmap care, and we'll set it to 255. So the reason I'm doing that is because we're linking each character in our image to its ASCII value. So if you if you aren't aware of ASCII values, I'll go ahead and load that up for you real quick. So here we have the old ASCII table, and so you see 
uh, for each character, if you were to add more characters to it, you know, you'd say, okay, well, A, the capital A is going to be 65, so it's going to take the 65th position in the care map array. And, but for right now, we just have 0 through 9, so we're just going to be drawing scores. So starting at 0, it's 48, so the 48th position is going to be the 0, the character for 0. And the 49th position in our array is going to be 1, 50, and so on. And so the reason I said it's 255 because that's how many ASCII characters there are. Well, yeah. For the most part. So now let's create a constructor for our bitmap font. And to make it easy on people, we're going to pass in, they'll just make it so they just have to pass in the path to the image. And then we'll load it in here. So we'll set load image, or set image to load image, and load image path for that font image. And then we're gonna have a add a uh, method for the bitmap font called add character, and this is how we're gonna add, you know, set each of these to an actual bitmap character with all this information we need to draw it. So first we're gonna take in a string for each character, then the x position, the y position on the image, the size of in each direction on the image and then finally the X padding and we're gonna set these to, to zero by default because we don't actually need to do well we might do padding but by default we're gonna set it to zero so we don't have to worry about it and then in our care map we're going to in order to get that ASCII value from a string we're going to access the uh, first item in the string and it's kinda like with you do with an array. So when you use a string as an array, each of these items is actually the ASCII value of that character at that position. So here, if we were to say, okay, the zero character would pass in as a string, the character at the first position or the zero position is actually going to be an integer representation of that string and it, or of that character. In our case, it's that I think it was 48 for 0. So care map at position 48 is going to be assigned a new bitmap character. And we're going to pass it all these values that we got. X pad and Y pad. So that's all you have to do for that. And now we're going to add the method to actually draw some text using our new little font here. So, we we'll take the string that we want to pass in, then the position that we want to draw it at, and then finally we're going to add some alignment functionality a little later. So, but for now we're going to just pass them in and set them to zero by default. So it's going to be so it's going to be left and top aligned. And that. And then we're just going to loop through our uh, care map, or excuse me, loop through the string. And so the way you can loop through a string is the same way you do with the arrays. So you can say for local i int is assigned each in the string. So it's going to give us each ASCII value for each character in the string. Then we'll check if that ASCII value has an actual image or a bitmap care assigned to it. So we'll say as long as that is not null, and end that out, oh, and that too. So as long as it's not null, what we can do is we're actually use a draw image rect. And so what we're going to do is just draw that certain piece of our font image to the screen using the information from this bitmap care object. So what well, you'll do that is we'll say an image, and it's going to start at the X position we we send in. And then we're going to add whatever padding there might be to that X value. So this can be our X padding. So X, this is going to be care map dot padding dot X. And then the Y and then add any padding we have in the, that direction. Whoops. Padding dot Y. And so we don't too go too far. I'm going to bring this down. And the next uh, next argument this draw image rect function takes 
is the position on the image that we want to draw a certain rect of the image from. So it's just simply going to be that image post we set when we created our bitmap care. So image post.x and then care map image post.y and then the size of that rectangle that we want to draw to the screen. So it's just going to be the x size and finally the y size. And then after we do that, we want to make sure our x is offset by all this we just did so it's not, you know, we're not drawing the same character on top of it. It's actually, you know, drawing a character, then moving to the right, drawing another character, and then shifting. So we're going to add the padding, if there's any, in the x direction, and the width of the characters. So it adds the padding and the width, and then so it's got that enough room, or it moves far enough to, so it can draw the next one. And size that x. So now let's go back to the main file, to our main class, create one more field. We're going to call this field score font, and it's going to be of our bitmap font type. And then down here, anywhere, we're going to set it here, we'll say score font. Sign, oops, <laughs> score font. Design new, new bitmap font numbers. PNG and now what we also want to do is initialize our bitmap font with our default characters and since we're just going 0 through 9 it's pretty easy we're just going to create a for loop that goes from 0 until 10 so not including 10 so it's going to go 0 to 9 and then what we're going to do is take score font and then call the add care and the first one and what was the string representation of the care so we're going to say string dot from care using the whoa. and that's using the from care the static function of the string class and we're going to convert using the ASCII value of 0 which is 48 and then we're going to add i so it'll go through each one starting at 0 so I set it to that then we're going to set the x position of 0, which is 0. So we're going to do i times the width. So it goes from 0, then it skips all the way to the next one, and then to the next one. So we're going to do 24, because they're all 24 wide. And then the y positions are all 0, because they're, the, they're all on the same line. And then what was it? The x size and the y size. So that's just 24 by 24. And then well, we're not going to do any padding right now. So, we should be able to just go down to. Well, first, actually, I'm just going to. Just to double check. Just kind of debugger. I'm going to change this draw text blocks. I'm going to use our score font. To, well, we can't draw blocks. And I'm just going to change this. So we're going to draw a score font, draw a string, and I'm just going to pick some random numbers just so we can see how it looks. So I'm going to draw it down a little bit so we can see it, and now I'm going to run this. And there you can see, yeah, it looks pretty good. They might be spaced out a little too much. So what I'm going to do, because this is not going to fit up here. We want this all to fit up there with their score. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually change the padding to a negative value and that'll squeeze them all together. So let's go back to where we initialize these characters and set the X padding to let's say negative 10 and run it. And we'll see that actually looks really nice. So yep, I'm going to go with that. So now let's go back and change where we draw our score. So let's go back to the render and we can take this out now. So now where we draw our score we want to set this instead of draw text we're going to use score font dot draw string. It's going to draw our score at this position and 
we can send an alignment, but our alignment's not going to work right now. So it's just so we can see what it looks like. There we go. Once we see right now, it's left and top aligned, right? What somewhere around there, somewhere around here. So we're gonna now we're gonna add alignment, so it's up and then right aligned, so it's gonna come up and over. So it'll look, it should look pretty good. And so the way we're gonna do that is gonna go back into our falling module and find the our bitmap font, which is right here. And we're gonna add another method. And what this method is gonna be called is called get text size. So this is gonna get the size, the pixel size of any string we send to it in our image font. So now we'll say this is gonna be a vec2d, so it's gonna give us a width and height. And we're gonna pass in a string to it. And so we're gonna create a local variable called return size and set it to a new vec2d. So by default, the size is gonna be zero by zero. And now what we'll do is we'll go ahead and close the method and then we're going to loop through each character in this string. Whoops, so we're gonna say for local i, or I'll say c for character. So C is assigned each in our string we're passing in. Then we're going to double check and make sure it's actually in our character map. So as long as this isn't null, and then we're going to set the return size in the x direction or the width. We're going to increase it by the total width of our character, including padding. So just like we did down here with this, we're just going to add care map. C position size to x plus care map C position padding dot x and just like that. And now for the height or in the y direction, what we're going to do is uh, uh, normally you know you'd be able to use like multi-line text, but for what we're doing, we're just going to assume it's just one line. So we want to get to set the height. We want to make sure it's the height is at least the same size as the largest character. So what we'll do for that, we're going to use the max function. And it's going to take the current uh, value of retsize.y and compare it to the current character we're looking at. Its size in the y direction plus its padding in the y direction. So it's pretty much just going to roll through all the characters and, it, and if any of them are really tall or if any of them have some extreme padding plus their height that makes them taller than everything else, we want to make sure that is its height so nothing's cut off. So that will take care of that. And we're going to end. And end that. And finally return the our ret size back to D. Now we just simply go into our draw string function and before we do anything we're going to get a text size of the current string being drawn and then we're going to adjust our x and y using our v align and h align values based on that the width so when we say we're going to subtract the width of our text times the h align I've actually got these mislabeled. This should be H align and this should be V align. Sorry about that. So our horizontal, our left and right alignment, and then this is our up and down alignment. And now our Y is just going to be adjusted by the height of our text times the V align. So what this is doing is if this is zero, then we're not going to adjust it at all. But if this is all the way up to one, then this is going to adjust our text in the negative x direction the total number or the total amount of the width. And if we set it to 0 0.5, like this, if it's 0 0.5, then it's going to be half the width adjusted to the left, which will center it. So that's pretty cool. Isn't it? Isn't it? And that's, that's all you have to do for alignment. So let's go back to here. 
And you can see we've already got it set up, so we're going to be all the way to the right aligned and then centered in the Y direction. And let's bump this because I noticed it was not quite far enough to the right. So now, oops, make sure. Okay, that needs to be a C. I don't know if you caught that. You probably caught it when you were typing this code up and you're like, Jim, you're an idiot. Alright, so now let's run this. And there you can see, oh, something's not quite right. So let's go back. And the problem was that I forgot to set the t specify the type for via line. So let's just throw float in there. And now it should work. And so that's going to do it for this video. Join me in the next one. We're going to finish up the graphics for a game. So we're going to have a nice background and a foreground, as well as the menu screen and the new desk screen. So if you have any questions, email me at jmsmultimeoutlaws.com or leave some comments down below.